This is Jared Horak. Welcome to my latest Road to the 2023 Kentucky Derby video. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the Withers Stakes at Aqueduct. Last couple weeks, I had some winners uh, on this Road to the Derby series. January 21st, the Comp Stakes, Instant Coffee, my top choice one. I gave out the trifecta there as well. And then last week, January 28th, the Southwest Stakes, my top choice, Arabian Night, got the job done as the favorite. And on my road to the Kentucky Oaks video series, I am 7 for 14. And the video that I covered for that series this week is the Forward Gal Stakes. You can find that one on my YouTube channel. I also did the Robert Lewis Stakes. As I said, I'm doing the Withers here. And then I'm going to be doing the Holy Bull as well. So check all of those videos on the road to the Oaks and Derby on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this content. Now let's get into the analysis of this video is going to be the seventh race at Aqueduct, Saturday, February 4th, 2023. The grade three, $250,000 weather stakes, three-year-olds, mile and an eighth on the main track, scheduled post time, 3.44 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Parks Invader, uh, number one, 90% Maddie, uh, will start the field here. Uh, breaking from that inside post, uh, this one won his first three starts at Parks, including a Pennsylvania-bred stakes race at five and a half furlongs. At seven furlongs, uh, a couple starts back in the Pennsylvania Nursery, fourth beaten a couple lengths, and then the Parks Juvenile last time uh, in that race. It was in the slop. He was second best that day. Uh, so now he's going to be stretching out in distance for the first time and leaving Parks for the first time. He likes to get involved early, so expect him stretching out to at least attend the pace. Uh, number two is General Banker. Uh, this one has nine starts, and he's a New York bred, but he's only one for nine with three seconds and a third. He broke his maiden in a New York bred stakes race that was in the mud, and he romped that day, and he looked really good. And then last time out in the Jerome, uh, that was a derby points race. He ended up finishing third, beating seven lanes. He was a clear third, not a bad effort. Uh, he was racing wide, and he's going to try to get involved late in here. This is his longest race uh, so far. He did run at a mile and a 16th on the turf a couple times. He was second in a maiden race and then fifth in a maiden race in, in those races. So it's not like he can't handle added ground, uh, but he did step up and he didn't really improve last time. And this field's probably just as good uh, as, as he faced last time. And I would think that there's at least a chance he can pick up a minor award. Arctic Arrogance is number three. This one's probably going to be the favorite in here. Putting blinkers on. He's run well in all of his starts. He's had five starts with two wins and three second place finishes. Handles Aqueduct. Four starts with a win and three seconds. Six furlong debut in the mud. He wired the field. Went to the front against New York Bread Stakes Company second time out. He finished second. He won the Sleepy Hollow Stakes against New York Breads at one mile in his third career start on October 30th. The grade two Remsen Stakes at this mile and an eighth distance on a wet track. He set the pace. He was second, beaten a half length. And then uh, the show finisher was more than 11 lengths back. So those top two really ran well there. And then in the Jerome Stakes, he was the favorite. He pressed the pace. He was right up there in the stretch. Uh, he couldn't quite get the job done. He was second, beaten a half length, more than seven lengths clear of the show finisher. So he's handled a good track. He's handled the slop. He's handled a fast track. There's nothing this horse can't do. He's handled the mile and an eighth distance. Putting blinkers on, expect him to be aggressively handled under Jose Lescano. Uh, number four, Andiamo of Firenze is probably going to try to get involved early. He broke his maiden in his career debut at the slop, in the slop, going wire to wire. He won the funny side stakes, pressing the pace at six and a half furlongs in the mud. And then he was second in a New York bread stakes race at Finger Lakes last fall. He returned in the Jerome stakes one mile on a good track. And he stalked the pace and he just didn't get involved. He was fifth beaten 13 lengths. But if you look at his best races as a two-year-old, he got involved early. So you got to think there got to be more aggressive with him. Kendra Carmouche can be an aggressive rider, and he's going to ride back. He didn't ride him aggressively last time, but I would expect that he's got to get him out there if they expect him to get involved at all in this race. Uh, number five, hit show for trainer Brad Cox. He was one that I liked at least underneath last week uh, in that Southwest Stakes, uh, but they ended up rerouting and running here instead. Maybe that was a, a good move. He got that extra time between starts. And he did have a bullet workout at Oakland Park on January 28th. That's the day that the Southwest was supposed to run. He fired a bullet that day for this race. His career debut at seven furlongs at Keelan from sixth place in a 10-horse field as the favorite. Powered away and won by more than five. Second time out, they stretched him out to a mile and a 16th. 
and he finished fourth, beating seven lengths in a nine-horse field. Not a terrible effort. It was off of a short layoff. His first start against winners, first start around two turns, and, and he was the beaten favorite that day. But he did bounce back at Oakland Park in a two-turn, one-mile race against Optional Claiming Company on December 17th. He sat wide from post seven in mid-pack, took over in the stretch, won by more than three lengths. He was adding Lasix. He loses Lasix here. Manny Franco gets aboard for Brad Cox. Uh, he's one for two with this barn. Uh, he's probably going to be within hailing distance. He's not a front runner by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, he's got at least enough positional speed to keep the leaders in his sights. And if he can go this far, uh, he's certainly going to be a contender. Candy Ride the Sire, Tap It the Dam Sire, certainly getting some stamina from that dam. Uh, prove Right in here uh, will round out the field. He's two for 11 with a second and two thirds. So he's had plenty of experience. Uh, and this one did win on, uh, at Laurel Park, an optional claiming race at five and a half furlongs, uh, stalking the pace on December 11th. He went to all-weather ground at Turfway last time. He attended the pace, and he weakened. So he's one that he can get involved. In the Remsen, he was uh, stalking the pace uh, from third. In the Nashua Stakes, a one-turn mile, he set the pace at Aqueduct before finishing third. So he's one that is capable of getting involved early. And that's going to be the key to this race, because there are a few that could get involved. Prove Right is one that could get involved. As I said, Andiamo Av Forense, as a horse, uh, as a two-year-old, liked to get involved early. And, but he didn't do that last time, but he could hear Arctic Arrogance putting blinkers on. He always gets involved early. 90% uh, Maddie stretching out in distance from the inside post. So there's a possibility here that we could see an honest pace. And uh, based on that, I'm going to go with number five, a hit show. I like that he's been freshened for this. He earned his best career speed rating in his last start at one mile around two turns. And he's one that seems to have some upside for trainer Brad Cox. Like the pedigree here, I think he might be able to handle this distance and just wear down Arctic Arrogance, who's definitely the one to beat. So that's the way that I see the Wither Stakes. My top choice is Hit Show, and I will make a win wager on number five Hit Show and then play a one-way exacta Hit Show over number three Arctic Arrogance. And that will wrap up this video. I'll be back with one more video this week. And that video will be the Holy Bull Stakes at Gulfstream Park. Until I see you then, good luck at the races.